Um, so today what we're doing is we are talking about point of view. Uh, you'll notice I have uh, a visual for you up here, it says point of view. Uh, I need one volunteer to please pass out these packets. Go ahead. While he's doing that, can someone please define point of view for me? What is point of view? Uh, point of view is definitely the point of view of the narrator or author. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the perspective, right? The viewpoint from which a story is told. Uh, what do we know about point of view? Do we know the difference between, or the different points of view? Can anyone name them? Amira. First, second, and third. Okay, so what is first person? Michael. You are telling the story? Well, I am telling the story. I am telling the story. And there's a difference you'll see in just a second. Um, when it's first person, everything starts with I or my, uh, mine, we, our, depending on whether it's plural or not. Okay, so can anyone think of a book that was written in first person? Goosebumps. Okay, I'm not actually that familiar with those, but uh, I know they were big. Xavier. Uh, guys. Come on. Um, could you say that again? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Diaries of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, good. Anything else? There. Okay, yeah. Those are all good examples. Um, can you think of any uh, genres, maybe? Any entire genres that are only written in first person? Remember again, first person is I, we, are, me, and us. Like, Autobiographies. Autobiographies, excellent. Okay, so um, in a year when uh, President Obama, say, leaves the White House, um, maybe he'll get started on writing his autobiographies. Or maybe, um, this is Donald Trump, if he becomes the next president after his presidency, um, he will write his autobiographies, or you know, it could be any of them. Uh, likewise, some of you, when you make it big, maybe you'll be playing in the NBA, or uh, you'll be on TV, you'll be on Dancing with the Stars, or The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, or you know, whatever. Um, maybe someday some of you will write an autobiography. Uh, and when you do, WNBA as well. So any questions about first person? Okay. Second person, what do we use in second person? Over here. You. You, your, uh-huh. That's uh, telling the perspective from, well, from your perspective. Um, an example. Any examples of what this might look like? Yeah. Right. Has anyone ever read any of those Choose Your Own Adventure books? Okay, so those are in with you. Um, but a better example and much more common is an instruction manual, maybe a cooking, or like a recipe, um, something like that, uh, where they're telling you what to do. They're explaining directions step by step. Maybe you go to the store and you buy a new PS4 or Samsung Galaxy 5 and you get a manual that says, congratulations on your purchase. Here's what you need to do to activate your you know, new device. So that's second person, okay? Uh, third person, what is third person? Uh, yes, um, let's go with Q, Omari. No, okay, uh, Mariana. You talking about like a type of book? Uh, sure, yeah, give me an example. on the piece, some of those old uh, fairy tales, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Those are, <coughs> yeah. Uh, the Percy Jackson thing. Percy Jackson. Yeah. And the uh, Olympian. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, Sebastian, is your hand up or are you? Um, the what? Uh, okay, I'm not no. familiar with those, but uh, sure. Um, now keep in mind with third person, yeah, one more. Um, Sure, Harry Potter, okay? Now, with third person, things get a little bit more challenging. 
And that's because there are multiple ways to tell a story uh, from the third person. So first off, anytime you see third person, you're going to be looking at he, she, uh, they, them, or you might see their actual names in print. Okay? The difference in third person is that we have three different types. We have the third person objective, the third person limited, and the third person omniscient. Okay? And if you refer to the uh, packets that were just passed out, you'll see each of those in the box up at the top. Okay, so what is objective, what is limited, what is omniscient? Well, when you tell a story, sometimes authors choose to just give you the events of the story as they happen. They don't give you much insight into the characters themselves, and they let you figure it out. That's objective, okay? In other words, where we see the events as they happen, the action, but we don't get any additional insight into their thoughts or their feelings. We just see what happens. Sometimes from the way they speak or from the way they interact with each other, we can tell kind of what they're thinking, but it's not explicitly stated in the text, meaning you won't see it written down on the page. You'll just have to infer. Uh, with third person limited, I'm sorry, that's third person objective. Now with third person limited, what we get is we get the thoughts and the feelings, kind of the internal dialogue of one character. And usually, yes, that would be the main everyone see the difference there? I'm going to give you guys a more concrete illustration in just a second that might help. Um, so you get the thoughts and feelings of just one person. Lastly, third person omniscient, you get the thoughts and feelings of multiple characters, two or more. Okay. So let's do an example. This will show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to make up a little story and it will be about me and So um, Talia walked into class, uh, Mr. Texan gave her the test, she did the test, and when Mr. Texan graded it, he gave her a 95%. Okay? There's an example of a third person objective story, because we have the perspective of a neutral observer. It's not told from Talia's perspective, it's not told from my perspective. Um, and we just have the events Now let me make it third person limited, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to add the thoughts and feelings of Talia into this story. So Talia came into class, took her test, Mr. Tex graded it and gave her a 95%. Talia thought that this was a terrible uh, grade, she was not happy with it, and she thought that she deserved a 100%. She basically thought that Mr. Texan was being an idiot, okay? Story. What do we have there? What's the difference between the two, Sebastian? Um, uh huh. And but what's uh what do you see in the story that isn't in the first one, um, Shemaya? Um, third person limited is actually coming from somebody's viewpoint, and third person objective is like from a mirror in this standpoint. Yeah. So they're both supposed to be neutral, but in the third person limited, we get their thoughts and feelings too. So it's not the narrator who's being biased. The narrator is just presenting the perspective of a character who is biased. Um, so let's do that now with third person omniscient. So Talia thought uh, her grade was not good. She wanted a 100%, and she thought that Mr. Texan was being an idiot. Uh, as she left, Mr. Texan lamented the fact that his best student had only gotten a 95 instead of the 100 that he wished he could have given her. Okay? Where's the difference between those two now? Uh, yeah, Heather. Um, with the third person limited, we saw more of Talia's feelings and then with the third person um, obsolete, I think. Omniscient. So yeah, I'm giving multiple perspectives, multiple points of view. Um, 
So, does everyone get the difference between third person objective, third person limited, and third person mission? Yeah. Okay, so let's start off on these packets, okay? Can I please have someone read the first paragraph? Um, yeah, Xavier, nice and loud. The first one. As we sat in front of Paul, she had two long brown pigtails that reached all the way down to her waist. Paul saw those pigtails and a terrible urge came over him. He wanted to pull a pigtail. He wanted to wrap his fist around it, feel the hair between her fingers and just think. He thought it would be fun to tie the pigtails together or better yet, tie them to her chair. But most of all, he just wanted to pull one. Okay. So I, I hear some of you guys laughing. This is actually, um, this is from a book called uh, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Um, it's by a guy named Lewis Satcher. Uh, he also wrote Holes. I don't know if oh, that's okay. oh. So he, he wrote these stories. If you have not read them and you ever are looking for something kind of humorous to read, uh, they're very funny. It's, um, I think they're about 25 chapters and each one of those chapters is um, a different student. And as you can see, as you'll quickly realize, they're not ordinary students. Um, they're very, very uh, adventurous and very unique. So, um, so who do we have in this uh, paragraph? Leslie and Paul. Leslie and Paul. Okay. Um, does anyone know what the point of view is? Third. Um, Jaquim. Third person. Third person. And how do you know it's third person? So we see names in there, and what else? What other clues, Derek? He used the word he. He, okay. Yeah, he, that's a clue that we need third person. Now, um, what type of third person is this having? Third person limited. Third person limited, how do we know that? Because it's only having one person's mm -hmm. And whose person's feelings is that? Um, okay, Paul is just sitting there, and he, he wants to reach out and wrap the pigtail around his finger and just yank down. Uh, so we know what Paul is thinking, what he's feeling. Do we know what Leslie's thinking or feeling? No. no. She's sitting up in front, blissfully unaware of, of the raging turmoil behind her. Okay, so um, good. So you should all have uh, third person for narrative perspective, um, third person limited. And then if it is third person, which character's thoughts are appealed for that, you should have. Uh, yes, go ahead, Michael. Read number two, Invitation to the Game. And we scrummed. Next to survival, scrummed was probably the most important word in our new vocabulary. We found a store that was throwing up water damage management. Getting them home was a problem since we had to make two trips. We knew Brad and Katie, armed with sticks to guard over the remains. I truly expected them to be challenged game boss, but they said that the only person who came by was a scrawny little rat of a girl living alone. We must have had one of the messages. Okay. Um, Vera, can you tell us what the point of view is? First person. How do we know that it's first person? Because he used I and we. Mm -hmm. Yep, and our. Good. Uh, number three. Donna Lee Trump set out her course for the war at the end of the village of Street Gap. She was at she was going there as she did once every ten years to meet her two sons, Miles and Jesse, and she was feeling at ease. At noon time, Winnie Foster, whose family owns the Tree Gap Wood, lost her patience as last at last and decided to think about running away. Someone new, someone I haven't called on yet. Uh, Laurie, have I called on you? Okay, um, go ahead. Um, third person? Okay, third person, yeah, and third person. Uh, are you having trouble seeing? Because I can, here's our choice, omniscient, limited, Anyone have a 
different answer. Xavier? Limited. Okay? And why do you think it's limited? Let's finish this one and then I'll, I'll uh, explain it back. What? Yes. Um, Amira. Okay. A mission. You know, let's do that now. I'm sorry. Um, let's go review these uh, again. Okay, so with third person, we have three options, right? Um, what are those options? They are objective, limited, and omniscient. Okay? Now, objective is where we don't know any of the thoughts or the feelings of any of the characters, right? So we just see the events as they happen, and maybe we draw our own conclusions. But in limited, we get the additional advantage of knowing one of the characters' thoughts and feelings. So remember that example I used uh, with Talia? Talia gets her test back from me, and inwardly she's raging that uh, she thinks she deserved a 100% so we see her thoughts and feelings. But if we were just reading that story, and if it were objective, we wouldn't know any of that, because all that would be stated was that she got 95, and I graded the test. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, so in objective, we don't know any of their thoughts or feelings. We just have to kind of draw that conclusion for ourselves. In limited, we know the thoughts and the feelings of one character, and usually, yes, it's the main in omniscient, we know the thoughts and or feelings of uh, two or more characters, okay? So we might not only see how one person is reacting to her grade, but we might see another person reacting to her reaction or, or the reaction that he has to giving out that particular grade, okay? And so that sometimes makes things a little more interesting because when you do see how characters react, uh, it makes them a little more um, multi-dimensional, okay, instead of just these flat static characters. Characters. Um, with objective, all of that is not stated, it's purely left to the reader to devise their own understanding, okay? All right, so those are the differences between our three. Now let's get back to this example. I've heard uh, Omari said this is third person objective, uh, someone else, is it Xavier, say third person limited? Okay, uh, Heather. Um, I think in third person, I mean, you, I'm just saying that I just know the feelings of one person and when he talks to him. Excellent. Okay, so you are correct. This is third person omniscient for those very reasons. Uh, you'll notice we have two characters in here. Well, we actually have more characters than that, but we have May Tuck the first sentence, and we have Winnie Foster in the third line. And uh, Heaven, how did you know what May Tuck was thinking? Where's the textual evidence for that? Um, in the second sister, no, on the second um, line, at the end it says she was feeling, and then it continues at the um, third line, at E, uh -huh. so that's like how she was feeling. And by the end of the third line, So we have uh, multiple characters where we know that they are uh, each expressing uh, feelings. Let's do this. Um, I, I think some of you guys can see it better than others over here. This, um, this visual is just showing you which words we use for which perspective. So for first person it has I, we, our, me, and us. Second person we have you. Third person he, she, they, them. But let's get the definitions uh, up here, okay? Of the third person in particular. So, do, can I have a volunteer to uh, yeah, have him come on up? Uh, does, it, does anyone still need the journal entry? Copy that down? Yeah. All right, we'll just put it right up here. All right, and you need a marker, I suppose. Here we go. Um, okay, so uh, help, help.
heaven out. What are the three different uh, types of third person? Uh, Shemaya. Uh, Uh, so I would write, yeah, objective, um, leave some space for a definition, limited, leave some space um, for a definition, and then omissions. Uh, somewhere on there, you might want to write out that this is for uh, third person only. Is there an omission or a limited or a uh, objective or an objective for first person? How about for second person? Okay, so this only applies to So objective, uh, who can who can tell us what a third person objective is? Go ahead. Only shows the event in the story. Right, that's good. Okay. Business as usual, if you will. Okay. When you guys are walking down the hallway, or the way that we are, um, and you see your friends, what mode do you think you're in? Uh, I'm sorry, I meant in terms of this, uh, in terms of this point of view. When you're walking down the hallway and you see your friends, are you objective, are you limited, or are you omniscient? Oh, okay, that's uh, kind of a misleading question. What I was getting at was, if you were watching two of your friends have a conversation, um, which would you be? Objective, okay? Because can you read your friends' thoughts? No. Not really. I mean, you can maybe kind of tell what they're thinking, but uh, you can't actually listen in on their thoughts or feelings. So you're objective, usually. Okay? Uh, what is limited? Uh, someone besides Michael and Shemaya. Let's get uh, Derek, you've spoken to. Omer, Jaquim, do you guys have any ideas for, uh, for third person limited? Okay, so yeah, the um, author gives us the thoughts and feelings of one character, and that's limited. Okay. Any of you read the Harry Potter books? Okay, remember when uh, Harry Potter is going back and forth with Professor Severus Snape? Uh -huh. And he's just furious about why, why is Snape so unfair, why does he hate me so much? That's an internal monologue. Um, and that's showing a limited, uh, limited third person. Now, if we were to also show what Professor Snape is thinking, then it would be omniscient. But I don't think J.K. really does that. Okay, and omniscience. What is third person omniscient? Go ahead. Come here. Well, you know the doctor two or more. Yep. Mm -hmm. That that's fine. Yep. Uh, two or more. Thoughts and feelings of two or more characters. Now keep in mind, in a, uh, in a novel, in a piece of literature, um, say the author gives you the thoughts and feelings of four characters, but there are eight characters in the scene. Which one is that? Which point of view? Yeah. Derek. How would this Still two or more, yeah. So keep in mind, an author might choose when he or she is writing. They might think, it would be useful in this scene for me to show what these two characters th are thinking so I can compare them, or so I can set up uh, something later on that happens. But they don't have to do that for every character. <coughs> they might choose just to do it for three characters, even if there are 20 in a scene. Um, or they might choose to do it for every single one. But as long as there's two or more, then we're going into third person omniscient. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now what if there's a passage where there are multiple thoughts, but it's all the same person doing the, the thinking? What is that? Limited? Limited? You said it's multiple thoughts? So what if uh, I have a passage where there's one character who's thinking, uh, 
who's very happy, and then later on he's very sad, and then later on he's kind of confused. Um, and there's you know maybe five or six different instances of where the author is telling the thoughts or the feelings of his character, but it's just one character. What would that be? Or, sorry, Mike. Limited. Why limited? Absolutely right. Yeah. That would still be uh, the first person limited. Okay. Uh, before we go on uh, to the next page, I want to do um, I want to do the next page together, and then maybe we can work individually. I also need to check. Um, we leave at twenty five. Yeah. Oh darn it. Okay, we gotta go. Um, all right. Uh, I guess that's fine. Demetrius, you can uh, put us on pause, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can line up. It's 23.